Good afternoon. Phil Lindemann with your Crystal 93 News from Bale Summit Orthopedics and Neurosurgery. Another false threat of violence put Upper Blue Elementary School on lockdown this morning. Police investigated and found no credible threat. Schools in Aspen and Boulder got similar calls. These are the latest in a rash of swatting calls meant to disrupt schools. Dozens of districts went on lockdown last week. Earlier last month, all of Summit School District was on lockdown for a fake bomb threat. Summit Schools has no comment on four current and former employees charged with failing to report sexual assault at Summit Middle School. Charges are tied to the case against one-time gym teacher Leonard Grams, accused of fondling students in class in 2021. The school principal and a counselor knew of those allegations months before contacting sheriff's deputies. Summit Coroner today identified the man found dead on Airport Road this week as 27-year-old Mason Kernel of Illinois. He was living and working in Breckenridge. Cause of death is pending an autopsy. Police are still investigating. February was the driest month since October here in Summit County. Beaver Creek claimed the most snow, 39 inches. That is still less than anyone reported in January or December. Breckenridge got the most in Summit, 30 inches. A basin saw less than 20 inches. Up north, Steamboat fared slightly better with 44 inches last month. But slopes down south, they got pummeled, 62 inches in the past seven days alone at Wolf Creek. Snowpack luckily is holding steady on the upper Colorado, still 16 points above average, but summit basins are shrinking fast, down 14 points at Fremont Pass, down 17 points at Hoosier. This week on the State of Summit. Up until a few years ago, our bread and butter was that old fashioned tax credit financed affordable housing. That was Andrew Paredes with the State Department of Housing at a local housing forum this week. It builds a great product and helps a lot of people, but it also comes with absolute constraints. The biggest constraint is AMI, area median income. If you make over $46,000 per year here in Summit, you do not qualify for most tax funded housing. But that could be changing with the new Middle Income Housing Authority. Could the role of state government be to kind of walk alongside private financial partners in taking some of the risk off of real estate development investing? This means more public-private partnerships, where $138 million in state grant funding might close the gap left by federal funding and a volatile market. We look for the last mile. If you think about infrastructure, the last mile of, of internet connectivity, the state's funding for housing is really the last mile of money to get the project breaking ground and ready to go. Heredis admits that money will not last forever, but the state is hearing the need. That's really generated the will to start creating some of these innovative funding sources and programs. Tune in again next week for The State of Summit on Crystal 93. In sports, the Avalanche played the Devils tonight at 7. And in local sports, congratulations to Summit High seniors Paola Arredondo and Jocelyn Roque. Paola just committed to the D1 rugby program at Dartmouth College, the defending Ivy League champions. Jocelyn committed to Lindenwood University, the defending national champs. Phil Lindemann with your Crystal 93 News from Vail Summit Orthopedics and Neurosurgery.